Hi, welcome to Inside the Moms Club, where being a mom is the coolest place to be. Here in the Moms Club, we believe that what embarrasses you now will make a great story later. And let's face it, you don't laugh sometimes, you're going to cry. Join us in having a good laugh together. I'm Monica Samuels. You are now inside the Moms Club, your private destination for all things mom. Hi, moms. Welcome to the Inside the Moms Club. I'm your host, Monica Sanders, and I'm here with my co-host, Julie Orkin. Hey, Julie. Ah, it's so good to see you. It's good to see you because, you know, we are back in our studio in Los Angeles, and we've been gone for a couple of months because we did a live show in Austin. We're gonna we're going live on the road. So we did our first one in our hometown of Austin, Texas. It was huge. It was kind of for me an out of body experience. The crowd and having the closest people I've known for a really long time be there. It was it was great. In fact, I would I promised my New Year's resolution, everyone made me say that I would not use the word amazing at all this year because <laughs> I use it all the time. But it really was amazing. So yeah. Yeah, it was, we this come is the into appropriate your town. time. Yeah. You need to join us, moms. It's really a lot of fun. We're going to do our next show in Dallas. We're looking yep. forward to that. So, and you can catch all these shows on our YouTube channel, which you need to subscribe and get all your other mom friends to subscribe to, to our YouTube channel. So, we are very excited. But because of that, we have not roomed together in like in a two months. couple of months. We usually share a hotel room when we go on the road. And, Which is um, special in its and we're we're good roommates own. together, but you know, it, but Julie did tell me that she says she snores, and but I, I had permission to poke her <laughs> if she snored, and I said, you know, I don't, you're fine, whatever. Yeah. And in truth, she's she doesn't snore that bad. Um, it is a low as, kitten, as, soft, consistent purr, right? It's a it's a. Yeah, a little bit bigger than that, but oh not God, too big. You guys. But, so anyway, last night I couldn't sleep, and I couldn't sleep, and I even watched an episode. I watched the the puffy shirt episode of Seinfeld. I mean, I tried everything <laughs> I think of to like go to sleep. And when someone's snoring and you're trying to sleep at that point, you're sort of like, okay, that is getting to be a little much. Yeah. So I went over and I very politely poked her. Right. Right. And then that did nothing. And then I poked her harder. Right. And then mm-hmm. I poked her a third time and it didn't do anything. I so, think we're at the stage where you got to shake. And so you a, telling this on the air is not going to be good for my dating life. No, but I, it's well, out saying, there now. It's very, so, yeah. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> men, men of America, it, it's not. It's really very not. It's fine. Right, it's fine. It's, it's just fine. if you have insomnia, that's going to be. Yes, if you're an insomniac, you might not want to marry Judy, Julie. <laughs> but other than that, um, no, it's fine. So, but you have also been busy because I haven't seen a lot of you because you were helping your parents move into independent, independent living. Right. They want you to say independent, not assisted. That's right. So um, they're not at that point. But it was a huge, huge ordeal. I mean, it's just a huge change all the way around. And you're trying to be positive and supportive. And this is going to be great. And you're going to love it. You know, so I've been busy. I haven't seen you like, t- you know. Well, when you told me the story of your dad first visiting the place. Right. He's a character. And he's he's a character. But what it dawned on me is he was an honest to goodness NCIS agent. Well, that he, was his career. People don't know that NCIS is a real. Yeah thing you know in this world and so you know so he's you, around the uh, old independent living you know telling people you know what he did and his past life because that's what they talk about but the kicker is is even though he's an ncis agent his name is also don johnson and it's really funny because he's short he's portly like so, it's ma- it's not matching all up, and then people think it's a joke. But no, my dad is Don Johnson, NCIS agent. But you told me for real, he had a gun and he did drug busts and he yeah, all the time ran into. I mean, can you imagine having that person in your independent living, you know, in your senior living center or whatever? Listen, I got away with nothing. I would as think a teenager, not. Um, and I was totally afraid to like would, you know. So would, NCIS is a good thing. I would think, and it's I like, love it. 
It's like having your mother as a lawyer, which is a whole other segment that my children have to deal with. Well, guess what? It's very exciting because there's we have a guest who is familiar with law enforcement because she is a star of the CBS hit series FBI, where she plays Agent Maggie Bell. Mm -hmm. She began her career as a model and transitioned to acting is in an iconic role in the movie Stick It and in the TV series Rookie Blue. And today, moms out there, she navigates the balancing act between being a successful artist and a dedicated mom. Please welcome Missy Peregrine. Welcome to the Moms Club, Missy. Hi, thank you. Thank you. I think you may argue with balancing, you know, is that really yeah, a well, word? Well, we want to get into all of that. So, <laughs> so just to, to give you a little background. So when we found out we were going to be interviewing you, I shared it with my husband, who is a huge fan of the show. And he told me the whole story about your maternity leaves. He knew that CBS, like they'd say, put her on leave and she, you know, she went on a leave and then she got poisoned by sarin gas, and, <laughs> but he knew the whole thing. And I thought, this is good because it's a guy who actually runs a, a nice size business seeing yeah. that CBS provided you with the maternity leave, which is pretty cool. So can you tell us yeah. the story of how Agent Maggie Bell took a little time off? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I was down to play pregnant if they wanted me to um ultimately they decided that that might be a little bit rough for the viewers um to know that i had a baby inside me and was doing all the things that i was doing which yeah. i was like fair enough that's fine I, I agree with that one so um so they poisoned me instead and <laughs> <laughs> and then i was off for six no i don't even know you guys i worked up until five weeks of having a baby and i was running around still Wow. Because I had never done this before and I didn't know how to take care of myself. And there was this pressure that I felt to not let anybody down. Mm. And so I just pushed myself very far to handle it. Um, when Otis was born, it was the night before New York shut down with the pandemic. Oh, wow. Mm. And then we had, then I went back to work um, the next season in the pandemic with a baby. I brought Otis to work with me so I could breastfeed. Yeah. That was the first time. <laughs> second wow. time was a little easier. What was the second time that you took time uh, off? Well, after that experience, I knew I wanted a home birth. Yeah. I didn't want to be in a hospital again. And I just knew that I was going to do it my way. After experiencing mm -hmm. being pregnant, knowing my body. I mean, it felt like the first time because I did it so differently. Um, the first time I had Pitocin without an epidural, oh, I didn't God. know what I was saying yes to. I just was so oh, wow. afraid of the epidural. Yeah. And it was so painful. And I, uh, it was pretty traumatic, honestly. And then after that, I said I didn't want anything. I just wanted to be home. Mm -hmm. And I had a water birth. Uh, wow. I felt like I got all my power back the second time around with the midwife that I had. Yeah. It was such a um, beautiful reconnect with myself. And I had her in three and a half hours and I climbed into bed oh. and then Otis was able to join us three hours later when he woke up oh, and I stayed home. I didn't go anywhere for a month. Yeah. I, got but, to stay yeah, home and I finally took Neil out, but I felt so cared for as a woman, yeah. you know, going through birth was really, I wish every woman had it. Yeah. That way. Those midwives as a nurse myself, um, I'm in awe of midwives that can really allow you to have that power back about, you know, what's <sighs> happening to your body, what we're going to go through. And um, mm -hmm. it really is a mental thing that they can talk you through that you can actually have such an amazing experience uh, such as a water birth. So thank you for sharing. that. Yeah, that's very that is that is impressive. We also saw so you have the you have both children Did you have to go back to work. That's mm -hmm some point and we did see the instagram video of you sharing your your crying or, or sharing that you had cried leaving your yeah, son yeah. what was what was that like and what what was that like transitioning over to being the working mom yeah it's um well because for four years and four seasons i kind of just was doing both things because i brought both kids to work with me so i could breastfeed and then I'd have a little bit of time off and then we'd go straight into another season. Uh, because of the strike, 
I actually got to be home with both kids. Mm. And it, it was the first time that I was able to really pay attention to myself and go, what do I need and how can I take care of myself, which was a very hard thing to do. I'm still struggling with it, uh, to, to not be pulled in both directions, but I was really nervous to go back to work. I'd finally found, uh, I guess a balance with my husband and with the kids. And I felt so good seeing every moment. Okay. Now I'm going to cry. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's so beautiful to hear them say a word that I don't know what they're talking about, but then I realize what they're talking about. And it's all these little small moments that are the payoff. And I was scared to miss it. Yeah. Well, you're I'm still trying to work it out. Um, going to work and, and I kind of try to tell the kids, especially Otis, because he gets upset that I'm at work. Mila is starting to get really clingy. She's a year and a half and yeah. holds on to me. You know, you're going to try to put them down and they put their legs up. They yeah. Like, yeah. You know, that's happening. Well, um, well you're, Otis can talk about it. You're expressing. And so that was hard. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I wrote a book a few years ago and we interviewed 100 women across the country because I had to make that decision. Mm -hmm. I decided to stay home. I was an attorney. I decided to stay home for a, a bit with my my second child because my first child we thought we had it all worked out so i had a nanny mm -hmm. and i was national chair of an organization i was in a big law firm my husband was a consultant and one i remember one weekend the nanny it, we were talking about the schedule for the week and she said um do you realize that neither one of you are home this weekend and i don't work weekends and so well it was it was a challenge to you know and yeah. to make sure that his needs were met and one thing that they some shared with me is i would get in the car and cry and feel awful that I left him. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. the nanny would share with me, well, five minutes after you left, he was fine. You know, I never knew if that was true, but I hope it's true. But it is yeah. hard. It is it is really hard. So yeah, it's it's really difficult to um, there's so much shame you naturally feel mm. for not being there. And at the same time, uh, my husband's going to he's getting his master's in social work yeah. in New York here. And so I'm making the money yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get free therapy from him when he's pardon? done. <laughs> You'll get free therapy from him yeah. about, yeah, yeah, the guilt. and the So yeah. far, I'm like, I don't want to hear it. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it comes differently from the spouse, right? So, but I will tell you this as a mom, that you, uh, the shame and the guilt, it's it, you can't help it. And the heart breaks over and over again. But as they get older, <laughs> I can tell you that, you know, they running that single cleat when you put it in the bag and they somehow get to school with one cleat and then you're driving around. <laughs> I mean, it's a whole different thing. So this process of motherhood, it, when you're at this stage, moms need moms because you feel guilty and you're sad and you don't want to leave, but you want to work. But when you get yeah. older, you're like, oh my God, listen to what my kid did today. And then you need right. moms in a different way. Yeah, then, you so, have, then you have your support group that helps you through the whole thing. <laughs> Well, yeah. well yeah. do you have a good support group of other moms? Like, do you have a group of friends that support um, you? And I have, I have some girlfriends for sure, but it's been tough here too. I mean, we don't have our families here. Yeah, me and Tom. Um, and also, I have great friends at work. I mean, truly, that I can I can talk to. But you know, it kind of feels like a little bit of an independent walk, mm -hmm. just with being on settled time. Of course, we have a lot of people who have families. But I will say a lot of the a lot of the family people are the men yeah. who are at work and yeah. they have their wives at home. And obviously I've worked with some mothers and, you know, there's one um, called a prop mom. <laughs> she would make me food when I was pregnant and she still supports us so much. And, and so I've been I've been taken care of. You yeah. know, I, I just think it's one of these things that's a personal work anyway. It kind of doesn't really matter what anybody's going to say to me at the end of the day, if I'm not careful what I'm saying to myself about it, mm -hmm. I don't know that I'm going to really take in anybody else's opinion. And that's hard work to put down that stuff, you know? And I think that's the hardest part about becoming a parent is you, you start evaluating your own childhood yeah, and what hurt you in your childhood, what you don't want to repeat. And then you realize, oh my God, my parents were 25 with three children. Right. How did they even do that? Right. You know, it's so a, then you have this newfound mm. respect for them, but you're like healing yourself or trying to teach kids how to be themselves. And you're like, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't I'm know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, how do you guys handle this? What does it look like? I mean, your parenting philosophy, have you and Tom talked about it? Of, you know, obviously you can talk about it and then you end up sometimes just winging it. And does he pitch in a lot? Because yeah. that's, a, I think more husbands these days are helping. Yes. Whereas in the past, that wasn't the case. Yes. I mean, Tom has been amazing, I will say, because he's he was home and it made it um, easier the first year. You know, we also had to have a nanny because he was he was doing uh, work. And so he was busy the first the first year of Otis's life, but he was home. Right. So I felt like I could leave a little bit. I mean, it was still so hard to do that. And if I heard Otis crying in the background on the phone, oh boy, I just was, it was so hard not to just walk off set and be like, I got to go. Yeah. <laughs> like, just, you know, your body reacts in a different way um, than your rational mind. But uh, yeah, Tom has been very supportive, uh, which I couldn't do this without him. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we're in funny think about what women had to do so that I could be here so that I could work and have opportunity in my life career wise and I'm doing that I have a career I have so many blessings because of it but then I really understand women who stay home and are with their kids and how it's a blessing that you know their partner goes to work so that they can be fully in their body and in themselves and through the hormonal experience of the shifts of motherhood uh and I think we're just constantly talking about that part because it's also hard for Tom not to be working all the time. He'd love to. Mm-hmm. Sure. He's, yeah. Look at that Otis amazing that. picture of your yeah, wedding. That's, yeah, yeah. That's very he, pre- yeah, he had to go through a bit to be a dad at home. Oh, yeah. With something that he had to navigate. And I'm having to navigate being the mom at work and also yeah. being, you know, what do they need? And I think our parenting styles, I don't even know what it is, honestly. <laughs> I think um, we are definitely in agreement that we don't, spank our kids because yeah. I can't imagine a child like Otis crying or Mila crying. And I'm like, you know what you need right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause you're having a hard time. It's not the 70s, well, that was like 70s an anymore. Kind of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but there is a lot of people, there are moms at home who are like, Oh my gosh, I would love to work. I would love to pursue this dream that you are actually getting to do. And I'm very familiar with your movie Stick It and that it's coming up on a special anniversary because I have d- daughters that were f- famously involved in gymnastics and I had to buy all the uh, American Girl gymnastics equipment and everything like mm-hmm. that. So I know that you are an athlete in your own right and that you love sports um, and that you have a job as, as a role that you actually have to be very physical. And I know people mm-hmm. are going to want to know what training do you go through? How do you learn how to hold that gun, shoot that gun? Like to me, like this is personal. I think I miss my calling with the FBI. So we want to know well, what you go through I, to get there. I also worry about you when you're out yeah. on assignment because I every time I see you, you don't you're the only one that doesn't have a helmet on. I'm like, like what? I'm a mom, you know, I worry about like get that woman a helmet. She's why is she just exposing herself like that? So yeah, what do you go what do you go through to prepare for your that role? Oh, for FBI? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um I, nothing, I I show up, if I show up, we're in a good spot at this point. Um, You know, truthfully, I was a cop for five seasons on, or six seasons, I guess, on Rookie Blue. So the transition with holding the gun and law enforcement stuff was not that hard. I grew up playing sports. I've always wanted to do um, roles where I was active because I knew that it takes so much of your time that there's no other way I'll be able to do that. Right. And I struggle now doing that. Um... I'm trying to figure out a way how to work out and take care of my body. Uh, the hours are so crazy. So I try to go to Pilates if I can. Yeah. That feels good to me now. You know, when I was younger, everything was to be as fast and hectic as possible. I'm actually going to play basketball tonight with the parents right. of my son's school for the first time in seven years. Oh and is this your favorite sport? Yes. Used to be. Yeah. 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 So we'll see. You know, I'm kind of the identity thing of also being a mother and getting back to yourself. And what does that mean? And I'm, you know, I'm turning 42 in June. I'm yeah. not young. I, you know, I'm not old. I'm not nothing. I don't know what I am. I'm 42. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm just going to work with what I got. But there's, again, that shift of um, what does matter to me and how can I take care of myself and how do I carve out that space? Yeah, yeah, because you do need time. You need time for you too. Well, so because of your interest in sports, now I was the team mom for my son's baseball team, and I was a, I 
was she, a driving she force was driven, for many years. Let I, me just say, I, I was this. driven. I don't know how much he was, but yeah. I was. <laughs> what? What are you? Now you love sports. Are you going to be the sports mom, or what if your? You, I know you love sports. So what if your kids come up one day and say, like, "I don't want to do I it. I hate sports." Or, yeah. I mean, you, are you looking ahead? Like, what? A, because you know what, Otis is of the age that if he's going to do soccer, and I, I, this is my experience as a baseball, you got to start right now. Oh my! I mean, Lord, put that hockey Monica. stick in his yeah. hand. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm being honest here, I Julie. Know. I know. It's the way of the world. So, have you thought that yeah. far ahead? Like, what's the next steps? His school and sports and what? yeah, you you cannot push my kid around. <laughs> he will tell you what he wants. I right. put him in soccer. Hates it. No problem. Yeah. So we get a basketball. You know, I definitely want that. It's because I want to share that with him. Yeah. And he looks like he's getting into dribbling because I got him a small ball in the house, and so. You know, I'm trying to also be in the city, which scares me to have two young children here. And I'm like, what can we do that we are in a safe space in the city that's, that's something we can share together? I didn't grow I was catching snakes when I was a kid in ditches. Yeah. And, you know, I, I had such a different childhood. So I'm trying to think of the fun stuff. So, you know, if he doesn't want to do it, he won't do it. But when he's ready to do something, he's 100%, which I respect. So we got him a bike a year ago and didn't want to ride it, didn't want to ride it. We took him out month ago and he rode it a pedal bike first go oh wow that's see and now he just rides a bike so i go okay yeah you know i'm just learning to trust him and when he has that instinct and he's interested in something i go great i want him to learn how to read music so that he can pick any instrument he wants to i want him to take care of his body and i think i think about this stuff all the time because i want him to have opportunity but i think ultimately i just want him to be able to have the confidence to express himself and say what he needs we're really working on deep breathing. Yeah. Regulating. Communication. Recognizing when we're having a hard time and how to take space. Um, yeah. Because that's stuff that I didn't have as a child. And ultimately, I'm waiting for him to tell me the things that he really likes. And I just ask the questions and I'll help guide him into that. And if he changes his mind, great. I great. Love Look what I'm doing. I no. like the theory that you have, like, really, honestly, I have a 16 year old and a 21 year old daughter, and basically they're raising me and you learn so much from your kids. It's incredible if you open up your mind to what is yeah. what is going actually going on. So with my first yeah. child, big difference. Second one, you pick it. I'm going to follow and support you. And so, you know what I mean? I think that that is really cool that you guys are working on that. Because I always yeah. think that well, we I'm can evolve. I'm a type A control freak, right? <laughs> so I like to have things a certain way. And my world's gotten yeah. blown up. It has been so hard for me personally because nothing's in order. Yeah. House is not in order. Nothing goes my way. I have all these great plans. I'm like, this is what we're going to do today. That's not yeah. true. We're going to have, have 10 meltdowns instead. We're not going <laughs> yeah. to uh, We're not going to be know, doing so that. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. He's yeah. teaching me how to be so flexible, which I used to have to say as a lie to myself in moments. I'd be like, I'm so flexible. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, Missy, there are I like kind so of them. Do you have what, what advice do you have for other young moms out there? Do you have any things that other things that you'd like to share that they can take note of? I I think they really need to be kind to themselves. I think, uh -huh. honestly, everyone is just really trying to do their best. Yep. And I think, if anything, there's so much pressure and there's so much information out there of what you could be doing better, what's right, what's wrong. It's, uh, to me, that suffocates me. And I've, I've, you know, I get crushed by all the things I should be doing um, according to people I don't even know. You people, yeah, mm -hmm. who've but, never yeah, met you. Um, yeah. You know, I, I don't have an Instagram full of amazing reels and photos and videos and time capsules. I got none of it. You know, and so, and I sit here and feel bad about it. But the truth is, I think the best thing you can do, and I think we, I need to do this, and it's what I'm trying to do, is just be present. So you keep it really small. Yeah, keep it really simple. small. And anything, every time you get overwhelmed about something, make the moment just about this moment. The rest of it always gets figured out. And you really can't control any of it anyway. Yeah. So stop. I gotcha. Exactly. But I have yeah. something quick for you that I'd love to ask because a lot of people know you as, you know, Maggie Bell because we attach ourselves to the character. But for yeah. Missy, uh, I have three things that I know people are going to want to know. New York or okay. L.A.? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's really tricky. Um, I miss the beaches so much oh, in yeah. L.A. 
I'm a I'm a beach girl. Yeah. That being said, I love the seasons in New York. Yeah, it's beautiful. I find New York highly overstimulating, which has been hard for me. Yeah. But I love the people here. Okay. Well, I'm not going to make you. Sounds like I'm saying New York. I I know. I don't know. (laughs) I mean, I'm not going to make you pick, but uh, dogs or cats? Dogs. Oh yeah, we we have a good we have a doodle you. life going on over here. I'm yeah. sheep a doodle, she's I'm golden doodle. doodle. Our lava doodle, excuse me, and you're golden right. doodle. I had the golden doodle. Yeah. Right. So we're all dog people. And you mentioned earlier your brain is full, but I would say podcasts or audiobooks. I don't do either of them. <laughs> Fair I'm enough. I'm gonna tell you, I, I can't even like yeah, my I put nothing in my ears. I don't listen to music. I don't nothing. Cause I Silence I can't really is golden. It. And, and yeah, it sucks because well, Tom listens to stuff all the time and I'm like, that's nice. That's you. nice. <laughs> that is. <laughs> I just want to shower that that's nice. I yeah. I love everything that you've shared because that's part of that's what the Moms Club is about. You're sharing some great your feelings, your ideas and that's amazing. Now, I want to ask you and you don't have to weigh in if you don't want to because this is a very controversial subject yeah. lately. So, if you can say, oh, you know, okay. I don't want to weigh into that. I <laughs> totally get it. But okay. you're Canadian. You you mm-hmm. grew up in Vancouver, Canada, the most beautiful place, one of my favorite cities yeah. uh, anywhere. And as you may know, um, Reese Witherspoon this last week ate snow or advocated eating well, she made snow. Like, she made something that was yeah. fun that was made out of snow. I saw you interviewed where you said, I believe, that you used to pour maple syrup on snow and make suckers out of it. Yeah. Or something like that. So you... You're as a Canadian, and I've seen the Weather Channel. All people are weighing in on whether you should eat snow. So, can you share with us your thoughts? And you, like I said, if you feel this is too controversial, you don't have to say anything. But I believe we can trust what you have to say about eating snow. Guys, I just had the most interesting experience last week when it was snowing here. I was, I'm usually a huge fan of eating snow. I don't really care about that. Go for it. Yeah. Except when I was shoveling the walkways for like yeah. on our street, there was so much pee. Yeah. 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 Most of the snow underneath was yellow and I was so upset by that. <laughs> and so then I had to tell Otis he wasn't allowed to eat the snow unless he like we were taking it off the like sifting off the cars was the only way they could eat snow. Well. And so I'm going to say I'm still pro eat it. No. Yeah, yes. no. it's not just, the worst thing you could do. Just don't pick it off the sidewalk. I'm still well, wondering why this was even a thing. Well, but. I don't understand why it's controversial. It's not what I thought you were going to ask. Well, like, yeah, hey, I'm here for it. What I don't understand either, but she got a lot of hate for it, evidently. <laughs> so I and, you know, we're from Texas, so we know, number one, we know not to eat yellow snow. So that's a given. Yeah. But also snow in Texas is full of rocks and grass and whatever. Yeah. So we kind of stay away from it. But no, anyway. well, I appreciate you. Now, so yeah. America... You have it on the ad- there she authority goes. She's a Canadian. of a Canadian That's who should right. know that yeah. you will live and be fine if you eat that snow. Yeah, so, eat it. We've done so much worse. That's, That's right. Exact, you're exactly <laughs> right. Well, Missy, we have some amazing women here, our Zoomer moms, who have some questions for you. So welcome, Zoomer right. moms. Welcome to the Moms Club. Well, I will introduce each one, and the first is... Actually, a police detective mm-hmm. herself. Donna, welcome Ooh. to the Moms Club. Do you have a question for Missy? Hi. Hi. Um, Donna LaProto. I'm, I have a nine-year-old and a five-year-old. Um, of course, I'm a law enforcement officer. My question to you, and I have a deep appreciation for your roles um, as, you know, portraying like strong female characters because we need to see them in the world. Um, but my question, I guess, just uh, being prepared Preparate, prepare for under like law enforcement, um, you know, with the training, um, has your outlook on life, has, has it changed any, any since you've been training and preparing for those roles? Yeah. You know, um, first of all, thank you for your yeah. service. Um, that's really incredible what you do. And I just want to tell you that it's something Support. that I've really thought about with my character. It would be really, um, I think it's really important to show women Mm -hmm. in positions like yours uh, and also having family and having having their heart torn into in places. I think it's so difficult to go to work. I think my 
respect for women um, in particular who do this job has gone through the roof, mm -hmm. especially as a, as a mother. Uh, I, I, I don't really know how you do that every day. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. First responder. Oh, thank thanks is huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Heather, welcome to the mom's club. Do you tell us a little bit about yourself and do you have a question for Missy? Hi, it's so nice to meet you. I'm a fan for sure. <laughs> too. Uh, Julie's daughter and I, my son are, uh, grew up together. They're both juniors in high school. Yes. They made it this far. Her son was the only boy at my daughter's 10th birthday party. So oh, he was awesome. the star. <laughs> they were really like destination wedding plans, but you know, whatever. <laughs> so I followed you on Instagram the other day when Julie asked me to be on the show. And I'm curious, you know, you talk about holding space for going back to work and your family. Yeah. And it's hard, especially when, you know, you have a partner and they're busy too and everybody's got a life. I mean, what is your, what do you find that, you know, after a couple of days into this, like what's your, what's the reward? What's the, you know, how is that looking for you? Ooh, um, you know, I think, uh, again, I have to kind of make it really present, you know, because I can always, I can always be tired and yeah. I can always be overwhelmed in, in either position. I try not to think about the future too much of the impact that I'm having, because I think that's the thing that scares me about my kids and not being here. I have this uh, desire to want to be with them all the time. By the way, it's so hard being with your kids all the time. So let's be clear yes. about that. It's so hard. Um, it is a break for me to go to work some days. The problem is that when I'm at work, I'm still multitasking like crazy. I'm still getting all the things for the house, mm -hmm. arranging all of the stuff. I mean, my head is just still with the family. Um, and I'm trying to get better at that. Um, I think the hardest part for me is making space for myself and not feeling bad about that. I, everybody talks about it. It's like self-care. It's like, ah, yeah. stop saying that. Like, it's something you can just do. It's not my whole heart and is conflicted. And I've cried a lot over this of how do I make both things work and how do I not break? Yeah. Because that's a real thing that I've felt and yeah I think I'm still finding my way through it but the only thing I can do is is make it small and be really look at the good stuff and I'm not a wooey person of like mm -hmm. oh, it's really great I am very <laughs> much like this sucks and it's hard and I'm crying a lot yeah. but there are really great things it's just not what everybody else sees yeah, and right. so I'm taking those really tiny moments and going, this feels so good. Thank God. I cry again. <laughs> to thank God I made it home tonight to feel Mila's yeah. head on my shoulder and I can put her to sleep. Um, or I'll, you know, get home and race home and see Otis and put him down to sleep. Yeah. It's, and what I, I can tell you this I'm is available that will be, I will have that connection and that's all I can count on, you know? Missy, people are going to love your honesty about yeah. this subject because really there is no answer to, you know, how to balance it all. So thank you so I, much for being yeah. raw because I actually it wrote a, a whole book about it, to be honest with you. <laughs> it was Come. called Comeback Moms. And it was about Great. the struggle. I'm gonna read it. <laughs> it was all send it to you. It was the struggle Great. of deciding yeah. to stay home with your kids or to stay home and or go to work. I worked for a big law firm. I was a you know, I was on the road. I could have been a partner in a big law firm, mm -hmm. but I saw what was going on around me. And it was funny because I was also on the law review at my law school. And we, after we graduated, the three women, we, all three of us who are on the law review, we all had kids. And one day I ran into one of them at the toy store. And I'm like, in the middle of the day, and I'm like, why wow. are you here? Well, we both had taken time off to yeah. stay with our kids. It's not an easy thing to give up something. I mean, when you've been a lawyer, I had to go to, you know, take the bar exam. So I told Julie yesterday, if I'm on life support and it's time for my bar dues to come due, please pay them or have someone pay it's them because I just want to get credit for the fact that was not easy to do. Yeah. But no. leaving your kids, and it's, it's hard. Yeah. But what I, I think we've I think kind of figured things out. are hard. Yeah. I respect you so much for, for leaving yeah. and, and making that space because it was something that I thought about. I mean, I'm under contract for six years and I, you know, 
I always thought that I would have kids and not work. That was my plan ah. um, because I wanted to be home. And then I ended up getting on this show that's the longest season I've ever worked, 22 episodes a year. Oh, my God. And so I just, honestly, it was just getting older. Then we had to do it, and I knew I wanted to have more than one. And so I kind of just put my head down and, and did what I had to do. But the the conflict is real, and I think it's hard. I think it's hard for every woman. I just, I don't even, you're working or you're not working. You're home with the kids. It's so difficult. And there's always a part of you that shifts so dramatically and changes that you've got to reconcile that. And that work is universal wherever you are. And I really, I really hope that women feel supported. I would love to be a support to other women. And, and um, if there's anything I could do with my story, it's, it's just to say that it is hard and I, and I hope that women stand with each other more instead of this comparison thing or saying, Oh, you're messing up your kids. Cause you're doing that over there. Well, yeah, you're yeah. messing up your kids cause you chose that. It's like, we all have that in our head already. Yeah. I, I love that you're that. saying all this because I think moms out there are going to listen to this and totally relate to it. And it's wonderful that you're saying it and you're representing what all, everyone's feeling. Trust me. They're, yeah, they're all what feeling. they're thinking. You can't. Like, yeah. And we always like, kind of like, I can't be, a partner the big partner at the big law firm and have my kids be the great kids that i want to have or or stay with the kids and end up being partner at the law firm but our as women i think we're just going to take a different trajectory of our lives right our career path and our motherhood and things just going to look a little different but we're going to get there and i love that you can be the face of that because i really believe it you're very passionate about it and you're well spoken about it and i think it's well, Missy's Incredible. saying you cannot have it all. You just can't. Like, you just can't yeah. have everything all at one time. Exactly. So, and, well, no, Roxanne, and I don't know why we people oh, want that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so hard. Why, why were we taught to have it? Yeah. <laughs> we don't know the answer to that. No, That's don't. another show. <laughs> <laughs> Roxanne, welcome to the Moms Club. Tell us a little bit about yourself. And do you have a question for Missy? Yes, I do. Uh, so I uh, am in the Holly was in the Hollywood vein and had a son at uh, 24 weeks and a pound and four ounces. So you go from doing 17 hour days, as I know you do sometimes, uh, to all of a sudden this is your life. Yeah. And yeah. Then, as Monica, you, everyone, you have to choose what you do. Uh, I did the same and chose my son. Um, you know, he's seven now, and. I would like to ask you as a mother in the industry and the argument that even I'm struggling with today is kids versus Mm -hmm. social media and what your advice would be as it's so ever changing and so fast with AI now coming in and, you know, having to monitor everything. Yeah. You know, I'm poof. I, I don't, I'm not very good at that. I have, (laughs) I've really struggled with the social media thing. Um, I've been pretty quiet in my life. I I don't really go on it very often. And the reason why is because I'm super sensitive and I know that there's some beautiful things about social media, you you know, and I've, you know, you follow Upworthy on Instagram and you just have these amazing stories that are inspiring and um, there's good stuff to follow. (sighs) I don't know where things are going. I, I, I worry about that, obviously, with like my kids, I've got, you know, they've got phones, there's like iPads, they don't have their own phones, yeah. but, you know, they already know about our phones. And I watch Mila just be so quick with scrolling and she just figures it out. And I'm like, woof, I don't, I don't love this. This is not how I grew up. Um, I think there's something really wonderful for, to being unplugged because I think the danger for me with social media is you can't teach... <sighs> Hmm. it's too easy to lie Mm. on social media. And as a child, we're so um, desperate to teach them how to read the cues and to set boundaries and to know who people are and to be able to take care of themselves and love people. We have all these different things that are really important interaction wise and how to be in the world. And then if they're always on social media, they're not getting the truth of what people are like and what the world is like. They're getting this curated version that, then they're also taking in all this idea of this is what I need to be and this is how it works. And it's wrong. And it's wrong. And I don't really know what I'm going to do. My kids are young right now, but I know I'm going to be up against it. I'm in New York. Things move so fast here. Right. Um, I got to tell you, I get 
tempted to just be like, I'm moving. I'm moving to a farm. Oh, yeah. My sister lives on a farm. They live in like 500 acres in Nova Scotia. Oh, wow. And, you know, it's very different than my life. It couldn't be more different, actually. So it's too extreme. But, (laughs) you know, they're homeschooled. They're not involved in things in the same way. And the imaginations that they have are amazing. And I guess, I guess at the end of the day, the only thing I can do is lock it down to, for me personally, it's down to me and Tom to teach our kids the values and what's important and to create a space where they can always come to us to ask questions and bring their hurts to us and bring their confusion to us that we can do our best to sit with them in it. I'm not going to have the answers to everything, but yeah. I have a theory, Missy, that kids are now being actually, as they come out, they're chipped with the ideal of how to teach you to use your own phone. I feel like your two-year-old <laughs> might show you something when she turns two in June. This is how you do this, mom, because yeah, we've talked I'll about really that. Upset. So it's actually kind of like, oh, God, you know what I mean? So well, Yeah, I mean, I think I've tried to avoid it <laughs> for myself for so long. Yeah. And now I know I'm going to be faced with it. Um Ugh, You'll just ask know. your kids. I mean, They'll know. That, yeah. Well, that also kind of yeah. begs the question. A lot of families, I know I go to restaurants and I look around and the entire family, yeah. they're out to dinner and everyone, including the one year old, has a, a phone. Yeah. Or a, a, yeah. I mean, do you have rules about that? Have you decided, you know, we're, we're going to be one of those families that you all put the phone in the basket or we're not going to we're going to relate with each other. We're not going to. Yeah, Tom and I try to, like, at a certain time every night, like, just not be on our phones. So when we're with the kids, we're really with the kids, and you don't see it. It's hard because you've got your music connected to your phone that connects to your house. The mm-hmm. thermostat is connected to your phone. Like, you, they're too much is connected to the phone. Your yeah. groceries are on your phone. So they don't know what we're doing, even though what we're doing is running the family and making sure everybody has their needs met. All they see is us not paying attention to them. And to, I worry that it looks like that is what we value mm-hmm. over them. And how else are they going to see that? What what else? They don't know better. They don't know all the facts. And so, yeah. And I mean, listen, it's tempting to bring an iPad when you have a toddler in a restaurant. But you know what? Too bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Toddlers are toddlers. I had to learn very quickly not to feel badly because a child who is not fully developed is having a meltdown. Yeah. You know, like what's fun is that like if a real person is walking by they'll look at you and you can tell they'll just go who's been there and share a smile and you're like thanks i needed that yeah you know um i took mila to la one time because i wanted to spend some more time with her and i just me and her to have a little girl's trip before the strike ended and i was seeing some friends and a woman came up to me in the airport and she goes you look like a pro you look you're like perfect at what you're doing and it I burst into tears and I said, I'm actually about to, I'm, I'm not okay. I'm, yeah. I'm breaking down. You're like, there's a <laughs> storm inside, regardless of what you <laughs> see on the outside. So totally. Yeah. Like you're just, you're just always like this with a kid of like, Ooh, I don't know how long she can make it for. When is the snap going to happen? Is it going to be on the plane? I really tried to do this flight on time so that she would sleep here. And she did everything the opposite of what I'd planned to do. Right. And I'm just waiting for like, how am I going to make it through this? But when you have, people and you make eye contact with them and there's connection and relationship and you don't even have to know them you have the human experience and when it's in person it's so uplifting as she basically said i i see you missy i see you right yeah she she saw what we're seeing right now a really good mom yeah because you really care jeez thanks lisa (laughs) you have a question tell missy a little about yourself and do you have a question for her uh, yes, my name is Lisa, and I love hearing you talk like that. It just reminds me so much when my kids were little. They were 17 months apart, and I did have to go to work, and I just made it such a point to let them know that when I didn't have work, that they were number one to me, and I will tell you it pays off because they're 29 and 30 now, and we're very close, and they um, they know that they were first me, even if I couldn't be with them all the time, and that, I think, is Mm-hmm. really the goal that I went for because I did not want to have to work I wanted to be with my kids but I couldn't um yeah. and so and one thing too just just as a little piece of advice when you're like that and you have to work then you spend every minute home with your children it, you tend to put your husband on the back burner a little bit so make sure you have some time set aside for date night that they don't come yeah. because I don't think I went anywhere without my kids I mean and I think that it 
didn't help them in some ways too because they always had us to lean back on to keep them socially happy if they weren't doing things yeah but my right what? i love that yeah, that's, that's my great little advice i just want to acknowledge that. yeah thank you for <laughs> saying that i really appreciate that that is something that's a very important thing to yeah. acknowledge is the partner in all of this yeah. because i think we get so tapped and taking care of things it's like the you know i i'm i'm the last to get the attention but he's definitely second last. You know what I mean? Like, if there's anybody yes. who's really going to be out of the family, he's out first. You said you're type A and I am too. So when the kid has to go to the doctor or there's a school meeting, well, even if he's available and can do it, well, you know, I want to hear it and I want to be there. So I really don't care if you can do it for me. I still don't want you to. So yeah. um, that's tough to even balance, relinquish. Yeah. You know you need that help. But one thing I wanted to ask you is, so now when they're growing up, is there a certain childhood tradition that you and your family had that you have already oh. put in place with your kids or you're looking forward to pursuing um, when they get a little older? You know, um, I grew up in the church. And while we're just starting to get back to church, um, the one value that I really loved from it was giving back and being in the community. Mm. And so what I really look forward to is, is how can we do that in the city and what can we do that I can bring them there. And I think uh, we'll probably be looking for something to do with children so that we can bring them. And, you know, we have uh, Floyd Bennett field in Brooklyn. We got a notification saying they needed donations because there were a lot of kids and families who were there that had no clothes. And I'm like, Oh my God, it's freezing outside. I just yeah. burst into tears on set. I was like, what? Like, we've got to get them clothes. That's crazy. I could not think about my kids freezing out there like this. And so, um, you know, that weekend I like went through the house. I went through all of their bins with old clothes and got the winter stuff and got the blankets. And I talked to Otis cause he could understand. And I just said, what toys are you done with? Like, we well, don't need all these toys. It's crazy. There's mm-hmm. kids who don't have any. And we just start the conversations of, Hey, mm-hmm. you're really blessed here. And we have mm-hmm. an opportunity to bless some other people. So let's go, let's go do that. Now we dropped off the bags to the school who were going to drop it off to them. But one day I really look forward to, um, really being involved in people with in people's lives and, and not just for like here you can have our things it's not that it's mm-hmm. I, I really want them to be able to uh build a connection with the community and be a part of that and i don't know what that looks like right now because i barely have time to do that and i think it's going to happen when i have a little bit more space mm-hmm. um or the opportunity will come up and i look forward to that too and i'll just know exactly when the right time is to go and do it but think for me it's um, that it's it'll pay off i took my kids with me to do angel tree shopping you know get the little angel and they would help pick the, the presents and now that they're yeah. grown they took on that role so nice. in their offices to get the donations and yeah. do that so um yeah awesome. it's a cool experience they remember so see something simple like that they'll love yeah it. well missy yeah, yeah. you mentioned you. community and the mom's club we are community we yes. are we, you should you can start one of the mom's clubs in new york or if you end up in nova scotia wherever you wherever you are because we are forming mom's clubs all over the country yeah and we that's our goal is to build those communities so that more and more moms awesome. can hear exactly what you've shared with us today it's connection. so important connection yeah, yeah. yeah. the connections yeah. are so important and for everybody and that's what this that's what inside the mom's club is all about well, tell us, you're on the sixth season of FBI. Do you it's have any out. other projects in the works? or where? And where can people find you on social media? Uh, projects in the works, yes. I filmed, a, uh, there's a movie that I helped produce and I'm starring in, but that's coming out later next year. Um, What's the so name of it? There's really no point in talking about it at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it's so far away. Um, and... Yeah, so that's that's a little later. Anyway, um, <laughs> social media. I don't know, guys. I got Instagram and Peregrim. That's really kind of where I am. But I got to tell you, I'm pretty bad at reading anything in there. I don't really read the comments. Um, and I don't post very much. But you know what? I don't know. You guys have really challenged me today because <laughs> I've, well, I'll, we- I'll admit that I've been quiet because I get nervous to put myself out there when I don't know who's listening and I you know it's not face to face and the truth is it goes against the very thing that I really believe which is to have community and if this right. this is like yeah. a positive way yeah. of connecting listen uh, well, if we could have you here in LA we would have done it like for yeah, sure absolutely yeah. it right. would have been amazing right. so there's something I don't know I'm gonna think about this in a way that I can be 
maybe a little more interactive and, and uh, open. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, scary. Well, we have enjoyed meeting you and we encourage all the moms out there to watch Agent Maggie Bell on FBI. That's right. Um, and see what happens with her and her co-worker. You know, they seem like he's, uh, he's being very careful. She, her, she's returning from Sarin Gas Poisoning, I, and he's very, very... Well, she's got big things coming uh, up on season six. She's, she's so, got a lot of yeah. big things coming up. So thank you so much, Missy. And thank you thanks to me. all you moms out there for joining us today. Um, you can see us on Instagram at Inside the Moms Club. Follow us there. Follow us on TikTok at Inside the Moms Club. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, yes. which we've started recently and is going gangbuster. Subscribe. Bring all your mom friends and ask them to subscribe, too. And then just start Moms Clubs out there. Start that network. Get that connection. That's what we're all about. And we're also about our Moms Club motto, which is, Julie, if you don't laugh sometimes... You are going to cry. You're going to cry. So, oh. cry. So, <laughs> laugh out there yeah moms. laugh a Keep lot laughing and, and join us humor. next time inside the mom's club thanks yeah. thank you